Do you see this right here? This burr looking thing? This is what the inside of my crown looked like inside my bore after I sent it back to McGowan Precision to have it fixed. It was worse than this. This is the fixed version. It's still not right. I did a previous video where I showed how it may be affecting accuracy. This is the after video because what I did is I rented some chamfer tools, some proper crowning tools, and I did the job myself. I'll put up a picture so you can see how well I did. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go over the groups I got with the exact same load development. Two things to note before we get too into this. First, on the bottom is a superimposed image of the previous range trip with the bad crown. On the top is with the fixed crown. Two, on the top row, the second group from the left, there's five bullet holes. One of those bullet holes actually belongs in the middle. Thankfully, that doesn't affect things too much, but still, it's something that we have to note. That's just a mistake I made, so sorry. Moving on, though. Let's start with what's most obvious. The top row, the one with the fixed crown, is definitely more accurate, more precise. Uh, I think it's great because to me, when I look at it, I see where the obvious flyer problem I had before is now gone. Two, I also notice that just by fixing the crown, just by changing the crown, the point of the impact of the groups has shifted because this is the same scope settings, but the point of impact has shifted about an inch to the right, also lower too. But... Here's the thing that I think is very interesting, and I know the bore is true because of this. With both of these load developments, when you take a look at the minimum charge, 26 grains, the minimum charge used, I should say, when we go up to 26 and a half, we note that both groups on 26 and a half is a huge shift to the right from the previous group. And then the point of impact roughly stays about the same place if you discount the flyers. So again, that's evidence that the bore was true and what was holding this rifle back was the crown. Definitely the gunsmith work that was done in this barrel was not up to snuff. They should have had more invested in their quality control department. There's more to say on that later. Getting into the nitty gritties, when we take a look at each individual load, so on the left, minimum charge, you can see that things kind of start off okay. It's about an inch group. When we go up, things get a little bit tighter, and that follows with the previous range strip too. Very interesting. When we go up in charge, things start to fall apart. Then when we get to 27 and a half, the second to last charge, we notice this weird almost sort of double grouping going on. This is one of the big differences between the two actually is that we noticed verticality before we fixed the crown. Now we have almost a horizontal stringing, but these are only four shot groups. It's either way. We just know that 27 and a half is just not good for this barrel. Then by the time we get to our maximum charge used, because 28 grains of lever revolution is not the maximum charge, but it's pretty close. But either way, things start to tighten up again. And then actually for the fixed barrel, this is the tightest group. This is the smallest group. And if you look, things are roughly in the same place and the same size as the beginning of this load development. Also look at the previous range trip where the same is also true. Very interesting. So there we go. I fixed McGowan Precision's big blunder with this barrel, but not all of it though. I have one last image to show you. The second big problem with this barrel was that the gas block journal was not machined properly. Near the shoulder where it transitions from the heavy barrel profile to the gas block journal was machined too large for just a little bit. And so a, a gas block could not fully fit over the gas port. I did invest into a different gas block, 
one that had a little bit better fitment. However, because of the cant, because of just the way things fit, it still was not a good seal. And what you'll see here is a bunch of powder residue that has leaked from the gas block over to the front of the barrel. And this is only with about 40 rounds worth of firing. This is an insane amount of gas leakage to be having. So ultimately, uh, I'm going to have to pull this barrel and find a way to fix that if I even want to. But I'm not going to waste any more rounds with it. The bore is good, but we still need to fix it further. I don't know. Maybe I'll find a friend who has the proper tools and he'll have a project barrel. Disappointing. 